Hey, buenos dias amigos. Eh, my wife tells me I need to get out of the habit of saying that because I'm not Mexican. But who knows? Some people got to have an intro of some sort. But nevertheless, I have the day all to myself and I thought maybe I'd just talk to you guys for no reason at all. <laughs> and Zach, Zach, uh, first person, congrats on your 100 subscribers mark. And I agree with you. You know, it's not about the numbers, but it is cool to see the progression of things. I definitely get excited about whenever I get one new subscriber. Anyway, I'm just going to go about the day riding around, play the day by ear, maybe go visit some friends. Maybe I see an old friend I don't see very often. He's a pr pretty good guy. He's a guitar player and he likes to build models. His name is Joe Thompson. And Joe, you're probably going to see this video, and I know you will. So uh, by the time you see this video, I would have already seen you. And, you. and on top of that, not that this means anything, I got this movie in the, in the mail a couple of weeks ago. It's called uh, Rebel on the Highway. It's supposed to be a biker movie, which it is. It says it's in the memory of Deacon Jones and Greg Allman. And this is one of these movies where if, well, you can tell these guys don't take themselves seriously. <laughs> but uh, it's supposed to be a biker movie uh, uh, slash voodoo slash blues and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's a good movie to sit down and watch at the end of the day in the evening when you've had a couple of shots and you're just relaxing and you're just expecting a lot of humor. This is the poster they sent me. And one of the things I'm going to do today is I've kind of procrastinated having this patch sewn on my uh, Giddy Up Texas patch for 2019. Many of you who have been following me on YouTube have seen my videos on my trip to Texas on the tramp. And uh, anyway, that's the, that's the event patch I got for it. And also, these guys who sent me that movie also sent me this patch here, Rebel on the Highway. And I guess the Giddy Up patch will go here with the other Giddy Up patch. Rebel on the Highway patch, I was thinking of putting it over here by all my highway patches. But, I don't know, it looks kind of like an afterthought. So, perhaps, maybe back here. It actually looks natural back there to me. That's one of the things I'm going to do. I'm going to ride down to Kenny's Shoe Repair in, in Biloxi and see if he'll sew these on for me. And I can do it myself, but hey, it just gives me an excuse to ride. And I guess probably go see my buddy Joe and maybe talk to you guys a little bit about what I have semi-planned for next weekend. I'm gonna head off and get some breakfast first before I start my day. Also about that movie, I'm going to leave a link to the website where I bought that movie down below in the description so you guys can go and check it out see if you want to buy that or not. Like I said, it's a not a very serious movie, but they definitely can make a better movie than me. And I don't make that great of movies. Uh, my little Texas short film was kind of cheesy, but then again, I didn't take myself seriously either. So yeah, go check that movie out You know, if you want to look at it. I'll put some links to the YouTube premieres or previews about the movie so you, can, you guys can see if you really want to check it out. Excuse me, dude. So, I'm guessing I'll go on down to the Waffle House and get me something to eat. Perhaps maybe I'll run into an old friend. Well, not really an old friend. He's older than me, and I guess I can call him a friend. He's a pretty cool guy. And sometimes him and his wife patronize this uh, this Waffle House down by the interstate. Boy, I noticed how when I ride this motorcycle and try to talk to you guys, and I've noticed it in the audio and uh, previous videos, how my voice just is different. And I guess it's because, being this is a hardtail, you know, it just <laughs> causes me to shake and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to get some breakfast at the Waffle House now, and, and perhaps maybe my friend will be there. And fast forward a bit, here we are coming up to I-10. Waffle House is just right on the other side. And let's see if old Puppy are up here too. Puppy is a motorcycle mechanic and he's been working on bikes for a long, long time. Namely Harley Davidson's a real master at the old school stuff. And I see his motorcycle. I, yep, there's his motorcycle right up there. It looks like I get to say hi to old, good old puppy. Too bad this car's in the way, I'd park right next to him. That's what I'm talking about, Soul Patrol. 
the bike may look ratty, but it's tip-top shape. I ain't got nothing on that guy. You guys will get to meet him when I go inside. No doubt they're probably wondering. Yeah, they're waving at me. They're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. So anyway, let's get inside. Give an order. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just a little tough one. I'm looking at him eating over here and I'm going, well, where's my food? I want food too. <laughs> and this this is the man I was talking about. This is Puppy. Puppy's quite the regular here at Waffle House and he's also quite the quite the motorcycle mechanic as I was saying earlier. But Puppy, how long have you been working on bikes? 58 years. Since 1961. Yeah, that was a good long time. So what, what never you, had anything but a Harley either. Yeah, uh, that was gonna be my next question. What are you gonna <laughs> never what, had anything what, what, but a big Harley. <laughs> yeah, just that's basically what I was saying earlier too. He's predominantly a, a Harley Davidson mechanic. Most of the older stuff too, huh? Yeah. Old I new stuff? Oh I do all I do all of it. I'm the last antique mechanic around here. <laughs> yeah, I ain't too many people doing it. What's your perspective on the new bikes? I don't they're making a lot of horsepower out of them. Like, the problem is Harley's moving away. And I think I think Harley's on its way out. I just think Harley's on its way out in this country. Well, the millennials are not. They're, they're looking for scooters and, and the crotch rockets. They're just not interested in Harley's. Um, they might gain some interest in it, but it's going to be too late. Harley's going to be gone right. by then. And, and Harley's are selling hotcakes in Europe. So oh, yeah. Harley's moving to Europe. At least they got good taste still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do have good taste. I want them to be bad guys, you know, make that bike, yeah. you know, over there for years. I, mean, and I talked about earlier about America producing a bunch of paper dolls out of men. I was watching this chopper run over in Spain. It's called the Zombie Run. Have you heard of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All these guys are they're riding they're riding these old school hardtail choppers, and not one of them's under 50 years old. You know. Yeah. And they got like, a lot of friends over there doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They're not riding baggers. They're not riding nope. road nope. Not riding the FLs. You know. They no, there's a whole crap load of them over there with real long front ends. Oh yeah, sure and enough. In fact, there's one, his front end starts way up here someplace, it goes way out there someplace, and he rides with handlebars like this, and, goes up <laughs> front. and that's how he drives his bike, and, I, and he leans around to look down the road, and it's just amazing. I've got a cute story for you. All right. Yeah, that picture of me, Shannon, those two, everybody knows about? Yeah. I saw it on a guy's t-shirt, right? <laughs> and I was looking at the, at the t-shirt, and I went, hey, that's me. <laughs> he answered. Yes, John, it is you. We love you over here in Italy. And I went, oh, oh that is so funny. <laughs> that was one of the chopper guys over there in Italy. I'll tell you what, you guys, you know, you, you do do like that and you keep it real. You stay consistent. You stay true to yourself. Hey, people across the world know this guy. And he found out by accident. There are some young guys, namely out in California, I've seen him. There's a chopper scene out there. Oh, there's some guys all now, in the United States coming in good. But just for the younger guys, or even even just younger guys, people who are just getting into wanting to wrench on their own bikes or wanting to get into the chopper thing, what, what kind of two cents you got to share with them? Be true to yourself. Don't care what anybody else thinks. When we were young, we wanted to impress somebody. By the time I was in my 40s, I didn't—I never impressed everybody I needed to impress, and I didn't care if I was impressing somebody or not. I'm, I was impressing myself, and that's what mattered. You know, I've been through some rough times, and even here in Gulfport, you just got to be true to yourself. I mean, I just kept right on plugging, and eventually people said, wow, he's still here. And it, when you build your, your own motorcycle, your motorcycle should be an extension of, of yourself, of yourself. Yes. not try to model after somebody else. Yep. Well, let me tell you what. Now I'm gonna brag a little bit. I have a trophy in my house that's six foot tall. At the bottom it has a plaque, and it has a little statement on the bottom of that trophy. And that statement says it all for me. Orange County Choppers came out about the time I got this trophy, and they were putting together these bikes. I call them uh, parts assemblers. They weren't really bike builders. Uh, they weren't really building bikes. They were buying their motors from somebody and right. buying their frames from somebody and yeah. buying their front ends from somebody else. And they thought they was real big, and everybody thought that, everybody else thought they was real big. But they didn't ever get a trophy that had a plaque across the bottom that said it was the best handcrafted part. That said it all. Right. And uh, I've got that on my wall, and I love it uh, because that's what I do. And I'm doing another one right now that I built the frame on myself it's in my shop. Awesome, it's a chopper with a long front end. And I'm not worried, uh, worried about nor interested in doing a, a TV chopper show. I just want to build motorcycles to ride them for myself. There you go. <laughs> Here's one more thing. Okay. I ain't into form, I'm into function. I want right. things that run good. Don't care what they look like. I usually make them look good when I build them. Then after that, they go downhill until I'm riding whatever it is I'm riding. And that was a good visit. Get on out of here and get down the road. Let's go see old Kenny the Shoe Man, see if he'll sew on some patches for me. Hey, 
okay you know i never really get on i-10 very often with this bike but it's not as enjoyable as the back roads but that's one reason i put this second motor in this frame so that i can do stuff like this and keep up with the traffic well i'm really glad to see this speedometer working like it is i finally have a good idea how fast i'm going on the interstate right now i'm doing 75 and it feels like it has a whole lot more and i mean watch this i'm doing 85 i mean holy crap and the only reason i did 85 is because i ran out of room and it got there with no problem now i know how to stay out of trouble <laughs> by watching that needle very closely. I normally don't ride down this road. Everybody and their brother is out and about and my perspective on riding bikes and how to ride a bike is when you're out in traffic, just go ahead and assume, don't pretend, just assume and truly believe Nobody knows you're there. And so I'm always on the defense on this road. And at least on this road, you have people going the same direction while they're cutting you off. But on past road, you got people stopping, crossing lanes, pull, pulling out in front of you, and all kinds of stuff. So you really, you kind of got to be like a motorcycle ninja to ride down that road. This is past road right here. Traffic gets kind of thick right around here. So kind of got to keep a sharp eye out for knuckleheads out here on the road especially you know namely if you're on a bike not a favorable road to ride, to ride down not in my opinion usually in this lane someone stops suddenly to turn that way and usually in this lane someone stops suddenly to turn that way or would stop trying to change lanes and you got people pulling in and out in front of each other and stuff like that it really can be unnerving on a bike And this is what I'm talking about. Crap. Okay. Here's a good spot. Okay, we're here, and no doubt Kenny's looking at me out the window wondering what in the world I'm doing right now. So let's go on in and see if you can sew on these patches. I'm here in Kenny's shop, and this is Kenny the Shoe Man. Uh, I don't remember his last name, but it don't matter. Recall. Recall, is that what it is? Yeah. How long have you been in business? 28 years. 28 years. This guy's been working on my boots every time something's wrong with him, which is why I ended up wearing the same freaking boots for about 12 years. And he's quite the leatherman, too. He's fixed a couple of saddlebags for me. He's done stuff nobody else will attempt. So he's a pretty, pretty, pretty good guy. Where'd my patches go? Okay. This one here, I want it uh, okay. about right there. I was thinking of like having this one stuck here, but it looked kind of like an afterthought like that. So I guess I'll have it right about right about there. We'll do that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. That'll so, work. We'll get it fixed up. All right. Cool beans. Well, that was fast. Not bad. That's pretty good. This man does pretty good work. To tell the people where they can find you. 2575 Pass Road in Biloxi. Um, just east of Keysburg Credit Union, south side of the road, right next to Goodyear Tire. All right. And you guys definitely will not be disappointed in what this man can do for your shoes and for any other leather work that he has in store. Anyway, then that's that. And now off to find my buddy, Little Joe. Last I heard, you've been working a lot at his daddy's bar, or his family's bar. I shouldn't say that because it's... Anyway, so I'm going to go find the, the little joint that you've been working at and uh, just pay him a visit. It'd be good to see you too, Joe, because I know you're watching this. Well, this is one of the areas of where I live that actually adds some character. You know, we got the Gulf of Mexico. I like to fish out here periodically, but 
most of the time the wind won't let me do it because I like to go out in the kayak. I used to live by this highway years ago and I used to travel it up and down so I miss seeing it on a, on a daily basis. But you got to go through the gauntlet of traffic and people and crazy drivers and to get here. Well, once you get here it's nice to be here. I honestly wish I lived closer to here again. You know, instead of five minutes to get to the beach, it takes me about a half hour. And depending on traffic or how bad it is, maybe maybe 45 minutes. But usually about a half hour. Almost there, guys. Yeah, the person I'm going to try and find to see if he's here. I've known for a very long time. We used to play music together. He's a very phenomenal guitar player. Namely a blues man. I mean, he can play other things. But, but Joe can play the guitar like you and I speak our first language. It just rolls right off his fingers just like the words roll right off our tongues. This is the place right here up on the corner. And he may be here, he, he may not. But I remember seeing in his videos, he's been working a whole lot. So let's see if we can find him in here. Yeah, let's see if this place is open. Uh, it is. Let's go inside. Yeah, I found him. He's here. And he's working just as I thought he would be. I used to play music here years ago. But, uh, but anyway, but this is my buddy Joe here. I've known Joe for many, many, many years. We used to play uh, used to play music together, and that doesn't mean we don't do it no more. I just haven't done it in a long time. What all goes on in this place here? What do you do here? Uh, we just play music sometimes on the weekends, but it's the oldest bar in Biloxi. It's, uh, it's the last one left in Biloxi. Uh, all of them went underwater during the hurricane. So, no more uh, bars in Biloxi, but this place? The, the neighborhood bar. See, it was water this high. Yeah, I remember that. I remember we that. swam through here. But yeah, I was here for Katrina too. Not in this place, I was, but I was in the area. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, I, I remember calling him, or he called me, he said, how are you doing? I said, I'm swimming right now. Uh, <laughs> True figure, story. <laughs> trying to figure out how to get out of the building, and then, then the phone call cut off, and that was it. I couldn't get in touch. Yeah, for three days, I thought this guy was dead, man. But he made it, man. He's a trooper. This, and this whole place made it, too. It shouldn't have, but it did. It still stands. How old is this building? 100 years old, easy. Well, I'd say about 80 years. There used to be a red and white grocery store. Back in the day before Walmart and all that stuff, they had these things called red and white grocery stores. Yeah. And that right here where the register is, that was the butcher's stand. You come up there and that's where you got your, your meat and all that stuff. But there was aisles in here and the front of the building was little pane glass. Well, I'll tell you what, this guy plays the blues and he plays guitar. And he plays more than just blues, but he plays guitar just like he speak, just like you and I speak words. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing to him, man. He just, he just flattered. But uh, you're still playing though, right? Yeah. So where are you playing at next? Uh, tonight at the hot spot. Tonight, yeah. Well, you guys are going to miss that gig if you want to come see it because <laughs> this won't get uploaded till probably four days Pre later. <laughs> Once I get done with all the editing. So I'm not going to tell you what day of the week it is. If anybody does want to come see you play, they're not going to do it tonight. So where are you playing at regularly? You just got to follow me on Facebook. Yeah, I also yeah. have a YouTube channel. Well, yeah. Speaking of which, I'm going to put Joe's link to his YouTube channel in the description. So you guys make sure you look at that, okay? I mean, I, I like model cars, you know. Being a musician and doing all this other stuff, being in bar rooms all the time, when, when I'm not playing music or having to be in a bar, I like to go home and play with plastic cars, you know. <laughs> it was something I did, but I'm slowly uh, kind of getting out of that a little. You still driving your hearse? Yeah. Yeah, I fixed to do a lot of work to the hearse. Oh, yeah, what, what are you going to do to it? Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the hood, take off the radiator cap, uh -huh. set that aside, push it away. I'm going to pull another car underneath it, and I'm going to tighten the radiator cap down. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the neighborhood's used to him by now, but the only one I know who drives around a hearse to carry his music equipment around. If you want to know who's playing at whatever juke joint, if there's a hearse out front, it's this guy. Big white hearse, yeah. Big white hearse. There's been a couple of times I've come out to grab equipment and there's little old ladies going, is everything all right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell them about the corpse that was in there when you went to look at it. Oh my God. Well, uh, I had a hearse before the hurricane. The hurricane kind of took everything. So I decided to start looking for another hearse. The first place I stopped 
was this funeral home right down the road. And there was a hearse there. So when I, I pulled in, and it was a nice hearse, much nicer than what I was looking for. So I started backing up. And uh, the guy stopped me and said, what do you need? So when I was looking to buy a hearse, but that's too nice, and you only got one of them. <laughs> he said, no, I just bought the funeral home, and I just bought a brand new hearse, and this one's going to be for sale. Can I look at it? He said, yeah. He said, go ahead. Open the door. Look in. So I looked in the driver's seat. I'm looking. It all looks really nice. And I look back. There's a pair of feet. <laughs> sure. oh, I hit my head and all. <laughs> Not the way you want to sell a car. Bro. He said, oh man, you ain't got to be afraid of him. It ain't the no, dead ones you, you got to be worried about. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Uh, and I still like it, I really do. Corvette motor, uh, Buick Roadmaster front and Cadillac back. They just called them Buick Specials. And what they did was they put a Cadillac back on it. And they used the Buick front. And had a Corvette motor transmission, Z71 rear end. And uh, it was $120,000 for the thing brand new. But, uh, so there was only like a few thousand of them made. This is my daily, that is what I do every day. I go around and visit folks and stuff like that. And I haven't seen this guy in 100,000 years, at least not in person. Most I see him on Facebook, it's like we see each other on Facebook and YouTube. But uh, anyway, if you guys happen to be in the area, come by this place, JR's Lounge. There's not a sign out front, but it's just the only joint in the neighborhood at the corner of DeSoto and Benaki in Biloxi, Mississippi. 1038 DeSoto. 1038 DeSoto. Oh, that's yeah. even worse. Went up. And you get to hang out with a lot of noisy people like these guys over here. But when, I, when I was jamming here Friday nights, it was pretty packed. Is it still like that here? Oh, when we had the jam session. Yeah, when they had the jam session. So if you guys are ever in the area, you know, come check this out. Check this guy out. You know? Follow me on Facebook. Facebook Thompson on Facebook. Joe Thompson. And check out Joe Thompson on YouTube. And again, I'm going to put the links down below in the description. And that's that. Okay. Well, that was a very nice visit. Well, that would have been disastrous. Well, that was a very nice visit. I didn't realize how much time had elapsed, but we sure did a lot of catching up. You know, I've changed a lot and Joe's changed a lot. And Joe, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you sitting and talking with me and stuff. It was definitely a good time, man. Anyway, you guys, a lot has transpired other than what you saw. A lot of stuff was said between us that you guys didn't see that, that I didn't record. And, and for the sake of our YouTube alter egos, which I know you guys have them too, everybody has them as a YouTuber, I'm going to keep those to ourselves. Guys, I don't know when this video is going to be uploaded. I don't know when I'll get the editing done. But um, hopefully if all goes well, next weekend, and you guys tell me what you think about this, next weekend I plan to take a trip somewhere within 400 miles north of me uh, on this motorcycle here, up around the Mississippi Delta. I, I want to look for the place where the, the legendary blues man, Robert Johnson, where urban legend has it that he allegedly sold his soul to the devil or made a deal with the devil in order to play a blues guitar and sing the blues. Now, I'm not saying I believe that story, but it is urban legend and a lot of people think so. But um, I plan to uh, take this bike where the Mississippi Delta Blues was born and I'm gonna look around a bit and make a weekend out of it, this Memorial Day weekend. I plan to film and document that trip so I can share it with you guys. So maybe you might find that interesting. Really don't know what to uh, expect from it because I've never been there before. You guys stay tuned for that. And stay tuned for more videos. If you guys can dig this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell icon for more content. And again, you guys who ride, you know, be safe out there and keep the rubber side down. And you guys be good to yourselves. Thanks a lot.